This video is in association with Gaia.com. To watch the full documentary The Secret of Water, go to Gaia.com forward slash fifth kind for access to this documentary and thousands of thought-provoking documentaries and original programs. Follow the links in the description below. The system of the universe exists as a single perfect organism. All of its parts, including us and our Earth, are inseparably bound together by huge streams of information. And on our planet, water plays the key role in how the information is exchanged. In effect, it is the medium through which all nature is governed. Our Earth is a giant container of water in which all forms of life arose. And every living thing is itself essentially a container of water. Depending on age, a human being is made up of 70 to 90 percent water. An adult drinks approximately 2.5 liters of water each day in order to sustain his normal life functions. Another 1.5 liters is absorbed through the skin during bathing or showering. Science has not yet been able to answer the question of why water is the only substance on the planet that can exist in three states. Liquid, solid, and gaseous. Why does water have the highest surface tension of all liquids? Why is it the most powerful solvent on Earth? And how, in defiance of the Earth's gravity, is water able to rise through the trunks of gigantic trees against tens of atmospheres of pressure? In a seed, for example, it reaches 400 atmospheres at the moment of germination. That's why a plant shoot can break through asphalt with ease. The water, of course, remains water, but its structure, like a nervous system, reacts to any irritation. The water molecule is a dipole. One end is charged more negatively, and the other more positively. This is a well-known phenomenon. A molecule acting through its negatively charged end can attract another molecule by its positively charged end, and then another molecule. This is how the structure of water is formed. It is fluid and short-lived. Somehow, among the changing forms, one can see stable formations. These are called clusters. It is within these structures that water retains information it has captured. Any substance coming into contact with water leaves a trace in the water. Had our ancestors guessed this when they used silver vessels to turn ordinary water into healing water? My first awareness of the capacity of water to hold memory came through my work in community healing. Often in a community healing assignment, in the story there is trauma, warfare, conflict, tragedy, and the work that's required has to address pastoral and emotional needs, psychological and spiritual needs, and has to address issues that are political and governance related. One of my most vivid experiences in that field was going into a place where I knew work would be required on all those levels. But as I prepared to go in, through a sequence of synchronicities, I began to realize that there was another layer to this story. And it was being impressed upon me that there was something in the water, that the waters would need cleansing. So this assignment to make bitter waters sweet, that phrase was impressed upon my mind and I took it as a spiritual metaphor for the whole work of community healing because all the familiar layers were there. Yes, there had been conflict. Yes, there had been tragedy. And yes, that whole area had been affected by military activity. So all that was there. But through a sequence of synchronicities, 
I began to realize that not only the human life had been affected in that area, but the water of the place itself, three water courses had been impacted in some way by some kind of trauma. The imprint of that trauma was in the place, in the people, and in the water itself. I had no intellectual grid for this. This was completely new to me. Nothing in my academic training had prepared me for this. But I knew that in folk memory and in ancient world mythology, there are stories of water carrying memory or hosting a malevolent presence of some kind or, or holding bad juju, where the water itself becomes a magnet for those things. And any fresh water that flows in comes to take on that same imprint. In the 1960s, in a closed laboratory in Germany, something inexplicable occurred. A laboratory assistant dropped a vacuum-sealed ampule containing virulent poison into a vessel with distilled water. Trying to conceal her blunder, she just left it in the water. The ampule was discovered only three days later. Since it was sealed, it did not pose any special hazard and the matter was closed. Later, the water was given to laboratory mice. And they died. Immediately, the water was thoroughly tested. Chemically, it proved to be impeccably clean. It meant that the water without direct contact with the poison somehow adopted its properties. In other words, it received negative information from the poison. A fantastic hypothesis was put forward, a hypothesis that could explain water's unpredictable behavior. Water has memory. Experiments done in many countries around the world have shown that water receives and makes an imprint of any outside influence, remembering everything that occurs in the space that surrounds it. It makes no difference where the water is located. If you transport water to outer space, it remains sensitive to what it encounters. NASA scientists discovered this when they released water in a low gravity environment. If a pure water is hard to make, is hard to get, and it's kind of reactive, it's very polar liquid, and so it tends to dissolve things and grab things and they become what, they, what we call surface active. If you take a drop of oil or something like that, it won't do that. Ethanol or alcohol won't do that, but water is a highly contaminable surface. If you fill up a water balloon, there was some junk on the mandrel that they used to make the balloon in the first place. That's on the inside of the balloon. That's instantly in the liquid. Now when you deploy that, that's, that, that junk that's in the liquid then goes to the surface, and so it, it changes the surface property somewhat. Water drops oscillate in reaction to the burst balloon membrane. It takes 45 minutes for it to stabilize and form a perfect sphere. Further experiments at low gravity allowed astronauts to study a sphere of water 75 millimeters in diameter with an air bubble inside. When water droplets were injected into the bubble, they created collision dynamics in action. Most of the collisions were created in a rebound or elastic fashion, bouncing off each other and the wall. But on occasion, an internal bubble would oscillate and the momentum would carry it across the interface in a mass transfer. The structure of water means how its molecules are organized. We can see how water molecules join together into groups. Scientists came up with the idea that these clusters work as memory cells of a certain sort, in which water records the whole history of its relationship with the world, as if on magnetic tape. If you consider a cluster as a group of specific molecules, then it can survive only a short amount of time. But if you consider it as a structure whereby molecules can leave and other molecules come in, the cluster can last effectively for a very long time. 
The stability of the cluster structures confirm the hypothesis that water is capable of recording and storing information. It may be the single most malleable computer, which can, it's like a computer memory. It's the memory of information. We must know how it is arranged. It is like the alphabet. If I give you the alphabet, you don't know a word, you don't know a letter, you don't know a sentence. So the molecular structure is the alphabet of water. And you must make a sentence out of water and you can change a sentence. This leads us to the idea that information is either made up of water or exists in it. In the language of the Pemon Indian tribe in Venezuela, Roraima is translated as the mother of all waters. A group of Russian biophysicists set out for this destination in January 2005 to collect a unique sample of water, which scientists say has never been in direct contact with human beings. Such water exists in only one place on Earth, in Venezuela. According to one hypothesis, a continent called Gondwana existed in the southern hemisphere during the Paleozoic era. Powerful tectonic processes occurring in the Earth's crust 3.5 million years ago split it into several parts. As a result of these changes, some segments of the continent sank, while those resting on granite substrates remained at their previous level. Elevated plateaus were formed, which the Indians called tepuis, meaning pillars. Roraima is the largest of them. It's a really remote place, very hard to get to. Three days of travel through the savanna and then the jungles. Then you climb an 800-meter wall. It takes a certain amount of enthusiasm. Therefore, we can say that the water we have there is in a unique, virgin state. There is always a large cloud over Roraima. As evening approaches, a light haze appears. When the moon comes out from behind the mountains, the mist begins to glow with an even blue light. And in that light, it is visible how fine droplets of moisture are hanging in the still air. The slightest breath of a breeze and this watery dust forms into drops. This is the origin of the rain which rushes down in countless waterfalls. So today is January 30th, water collection number 16. Then we shall pack it all up in foil. And in this form, this water will hold its energy for several days with the air of these places. Then we'll arrive in St. Petersburg and we'll calmly carry out our laboratory analysis several thousand miles away. And only then, will we be able to draw any conclusions? Professor Korotkov's laboratory has developed an instrument that can determine the energetics of water. It works on the basis of the Curlian effect. Everything that enters a strong electromagnetic field begins to emit light. The greater energy the object possesses, the brighter it shines. The water from Venezuela was compared with ordinary drinking water. We can say that this water is not double, not triple, but it is 40,000 times more active. So these are really two fundamentally different substances. And water of this type, this water, which immediately activates the body, it activates the whole system. 
That's why there, where the Indians, despite the deprivation in which they live, live very long lives and are very happy, they absolutely do not want civilization to come to them. This water also had an effect on the science team, even though their visit to the area lasted less than a week. Dr. Korotkov used a special instrument to measure the energy level of each person at the base of Roraima, and then two days later, after each member reached the summit. And what we found was really astonishing. So now you see these are images of energy field of a person at the sea level, and you see it's a lot of breaks, it's very jagged, and it's a typical uh, reflection of condition. And this is the same person, but at the top of Arima. And you see dramatic difference. What is water? In water researcher Victor Schauberger's view, it is a living substance, which can die if it is treated poorly. Schauberger believed that water is born in the forest. It falls as rain, and it filters down through the rocks, gathering minerals and trace elements until arriving at the surface as a spring. At this point, water is full of mother substances ready to provide life. Its vitality depends on how it flows, or how it is forced to flow. Our systems for moving and processing water are designed from the point of view that water is merely a fluid, without life or energy. So we don't care how it's treated. We make water flow along straight channels, through cylindrical devices and other shapes that are never found in nature. We ignore water's natural path. Spiral patterns and arrangements are all around us in the forms of galaxies, cyclones, and tornadoes. These spirals are everywhere in nature, which has chosen these formations because they represent the law of constant change. If we want to create a system for moving water which allows it to remain vital and alive, we must provide the opportunity for water to breathe. Victor Schauberger's research on water revitalization inspired the development of flow forms which are a series of formed basins that allow water to flow into figure-eight vortical movements, causing the water to pulsate rhythmically. The type of movement in flow forms simulates a mountain stream, energizing, restructuring, and oxygenating water. Flow forms mimic nature's flowing movement, plus simulate the heart rhythms, helping to refresh and reharmonize water. Vortical treatments of harmonic frequencies is an effective way to eliminate undesirable information remaining in water after removal of physical pollutants. Water makes a long, difficult journey before arriving in our homes. It used to be common knowledge that a settlement could only occur where there was a natural source of water. Today, whether or not there is water in a place is of no importance because we transport water for thousands of miles using high pressure. In nature, rivers and streams always flow along a smoothly curving course. But any water system has multiple right angle turns. The natural structure of the water breaks down more and more with each such turn. Water from a water supply system which flows into our homes through pipes has various forms, crystals of various forms, but they are all deformed, that is, they may look like this. It can look like this or have these crystals and many other arrangements, but you won't see any symmetry or beauty. We've been forming crystals for more than a dozen years. From our tests, we came to the conclusion that living water forms more hexagonal crystals, and less vibrant or dead water doesn't form hexagonal shapes. 
What concerns me is that water from any big city tends not to form beautiful crystals. When water travels in the city, it collects negative information from the people and pollution. Also, the more chlorine in the water, the less crystals can form. We also have pipes that make lots of turns. Imagine if you were water. You might want to die with all this unnatural and forced movement. Water that flows in a floor panel heating system is devitalized and rotten. It sucks energy out of the people, plants and animals living in that house. It actually steals the energy. I've studied water crystals for 15 years. What I would really like people to know through my research or work is that water has memory. Dr. Masato Emoto exposes water to a variety of outside stimuli at his research laboratory in Japan. His researchers capture 50 samples of each water specimen, which are frozen, and after three hours examined in the lab at a temperature of minus five degrees centigrade. Only a few will reveal their beautiful structure. As the temperature rises under the microscope, the crystal starts to grow and expand. The researcher captures its image on camera before it returns to the liquid state. This beautiful geometrical wonder expands in six directions from each corner of its hexagonal base. A lateral view reveals a protrusion that appears at the tip of the cone. This is because ice crystals do not develop two-dimensionally, but rather three-dimensionally from the center to the edges. Water from natural sources, unlike tap water, provides a wide range of crystalline formations. This allows us to peek into the life and health of water. Living water, in good condition, produces beautiful hexagonal crystals, as we see in these pictures. If water gets sick or dies, what we see changes dramatically. We can see how water reacts to a computer, a television set, to hard rock, a microwave oven, a cell phone. The basic principle in the universe is vibration, and vibration can be created by the principle of resonance. Without resonance, vibration doesn't exist. And this is the truth in the universe. In the quantum world, very small units of things resonate with each other, and that's how they affirm themselves. So we are able to reconfirm the existence of things by seeing them through this resonance theory. Max Planck once said that everything is a wave. In other words, when we write a word on a sheet of paper and apply it to water, we can see that the water crystal changes its form. It means a transformation of the water itself under the influence of the frequencies that we emit with this word. To watch the full documentary, The Secret of Water, go to Gaia.com forward slash fifth kind for access to this documentary and thousands of thought-provoking documentaries and original programs. Follow the links in the description below. The idea that DNA controls our life is incorrect. Science was seeking the physical basis of evolution as an insight into understanding the mechanisms that control life. I am your host Bruce Lipton and as a pioneer in the research of stem cells and epigenetics, 
I hope to share with you a scientific approach as to how spirits in every part of our body, a new awareness that can create an inner evolution. In ancient world mythology, there are stories of water carrying memory or hosting a malevolent presence of some kind or, or holding bad juju where the water itself becomes a magnet for those things and any fresh water that flows in comes to take on that same imprint. Stories like that certainly exist in Asian and European traditions. I went to the Hebrew tradition and probed the ancient stories of the Hebrew scriptures to find tools that would enable me to respond and do a work that would help to cleanse and heal the waters. The before and after of that case was a night and day difference. Not only did we have the usual markers of community healing, the health differences, the psychological, spiritual and emotional change, but I had a very concrete case study in the form of an older man who came to see me. Now he had lived in that district for decades and all the time that he'd lived there, he'd suffered from a chronic and embarrassing health problem. Now, for some reason, in all the time he'd lived there, he had avoided drinking the local water. For no particular reason, but he had. And he shared this story with me, not knowing anything about the work that I'd done with the local water. He just wanted to tell me this story. He told me that in recent weeks, something had compelled him to start drinking the local water every morning and every evening. And within the space of a few days, this medical condition that had afflicted him for decades spontaneously cured itself. Now that was one of a few signs that made me sit back and think, something real has happened here. Now all this happened long before I knew any of the contemporary science of the memory of water, but it was a personal experience that showed me the power and reality of it. Go to Gaia.com forward slash fifth kind and unlock your full access membership today.